Hello everybody, this is Leslie Peabody and today it's time for our Saturday Sanctuary. Today's Saturday Sanctuary is how to find the money to grow your business. I know that the computer is lagging a little bit so we will wait a second while, while the slides progress. So the reason that we're doing this, how to find the money to grow your business. I'm a business coach. My business is named Ninjas in High Heels and I coach women on how to grow their business and I help them include passive income streams into their business so that as we grow as women, as our businesses grow, and we have to take time off to raise children, to care for aging or ill parents, to, to do all those things that take us out of the income earning criteria and move us into the more feminine side of leadership and the nurturing side of our lives, we still need businesses that make money for us. Well, what I'm finding is that my clients don't feel like they have the money for these coaching programs to grow their businesses so that they can do that. And that just, it, it touches my heart because I understand where people are. I've been there myself. I understand those concerns. You have to pay your bills, so how can you grow your business at the same time you're paying your bills? In fact, one of the models, one of the pieces of my business that I have available for people is blogging. If you were here for last week's Saturday Sanctuary, you know that I believe that blogging is one of the largest tools that we have in order to help grow our business. Well, at $25 a month, people still didn't have enough money. They thought that that was too expensive to grow their business is a $25 a month blogging system. That just hurt my heart when I heard that because if you can't even invest $25 a month into your own business, how is your business going to grow? How is anything going to be different? As Albert Einstein says, insanity is doing the same thing over and over again and expecting different results. How will we ever change where we are if we can't find the money to invest in ourselves? So let me tell you a little bit about myself um, so that you know where I'm coming from. I am a person that came from a two-income household and about five years ago it went down to a one-income household. So I make a good living. I'm really very blessed in terms of my job. Um, but we went from a two-income household down to a one-income household and that didn't quite cut the household income in half but it was really close to cutting the income in half. and our family just like probably all of you at the two income family we were spending as much as we had for two incomes so when we went down to one income oh my goodness gracious that was huge change during these last five years about 18 months ago or so I got divorced so even though the ex-husband wasn't working, you have the added bills of the legal system and, and things like that on top of that. I do have two teenage children with my ex-husband. During this divorce procedure, my oldest son came to me and he said, Mom, my friend needs a place to live. His grandmother had been the nanny to our children when they were young and his grandmother got too ill to care for him. He was a 17-year-old at the time he was a 16-year-old boy. So we knew him, we, my children and I knew him. So during this divorce, during this financial upheaval of my life, I brought not, I had not only two teenage children that I had to support, I brought one more into the mix. So now I have three teenage children. Recently, within the last six months or so, so the divorce has been final, now we're getting on with our lives, right? We're, we're getting back into the routine. Well, I've discovered that our house is the house where kids hang out, which I love. I totally love having the kids hang out at my house. I, the kids tell me I'm the cool mom. 
and I'm still trying to figure out if that's a good thing or not. They tell me it's a good thing, and there are great advantages to being the house where everybody hangs out. I know where my kids are almost all the time. I know their friends. I get to have talks with them about what they're doing. You know, I really get to know my children, and I get to know their friends, and so it's it's a huge benefit. I just love it. It's a gift, frankly, to be the house where all the kids hang out. However, that means I usually have an additional two teenage boys hanging out at my house. I'd say five out of seven days of the week, and it's not always the same teenage boys. So I never know at dinner time if I'm feeding four or I'm feeding seven or eight. So I always have to have additional food in the house. So if you can imagine, outside of my mortgage, my biggest expense is the food bill. Like the other day, I went to the grocery store and cuties were on sale for $4. I think three pounds for $4. Maybe it's five pounds for $4. Anyway, I bought two bags of cuties. So $8. In less than 24 hours, $8 worth of cuties were gone. The food bill is astronomical. So when I sit here and I talk to you about different ways that you can save money, I get it. I'm there. I live it on a daily basis. I know what is going on. We all have a little bit different things going on in our life. That's very true. But I do get it. I am not rolling in money. I don't have everything that I need. Well, long about the time I got divorced, or I was starting to go through the divorce, I found a group called Financially Fit Females. It's in Denver, and it actually is going online. Um, and it's a group about financial fitness for women. Its founder, Charlene, um, she went through divorce years and years ago, and she hadn't handled any of the fi family finances. I was lucky enough that I had handled the family finances. And intuitively, I kind of understand financial life, budgeting, those kind of things. But one of the things that we did in this Financially Fit Females group is we had a book club. And this book so spoke to me. It's called Smart Women Finish Rich by David Bach. And it's a very dated book. It's probably, oh, I would say 20 years or more old. But the book so spoke to me. As a single mother, a single woman, it was phenomenal for the point in time where I was and that book is really the reason why I'm here talking to you today it taught me so much about how to put your financial life in order so when you read it and you should read it um, in fact we could even do a book study online about it but when you read it it is so important to utilize what it says and to understand that even though it's dated, what it says is still valid today. For instance, one of the things it talks about putting together is a bus book. What happens, or maybe I just call it the bus book, I'm not sure if they exactly called it that in the book. What happens if something happens to me? Now I'm a single mom, I don't have a spouse anymore, I have a mom, I have sisters, but what happens if I get hit by a bus? So I pulled together this book of my financial life. I have a picture of a bus on it. It's a three-ring binder. And in this book, it has copies of my latest bank statements. I don't update them every month. Once a year is my goal is to update them every January. It has copies of my life insurance. It has copies of all the important paperwork that the kids need. So it's in the right hand corner of my desk. It's in my drawer, and the kids just have to pull that out. I told my mom and I told my sisters about it. Tell the kids to give you the bus book if something ever happens to me. It has all the things that people need to know about me so that my kids can get help, right? So that's an example of the powerful tools that David Bach has in this book, Smart Women Finish Rich. The powerful factor for us today is called the latte factor. That is the reason for this meeting, the latte factor. When my clients or my potential clients said, you know, Leslie, that sounds good, but I don't have the money to spend $25 on a blogging system. That's too much money. But this woman wanted to earn $100,000 a year from her business, but she couldn't invest $25 a month, a month, on a business that she wanted to pay out $100,000 a year. I got to thinking, how can I invest the money that I invest into my business to help it grow and prosper? How do I do that? 
And it comes back to these basics in this book, and it comes back to the latte factor. I just love the name, so I use it. Um, it's not unique, or it's not necessarily different to David Bach, but I think he explains it in such a way that we all get it. And what he basically says is that it's the little things done consistently that can save you a lot of money. So he, he sat there with a client in the book, in the story, and he says, okay, what do you do when you get up in the morning? And the woman said, well, I get up, I take a shower, I do my hair, I do my makeup, and I drive to the office, and then I work. And he said, okay, on that drive to the office, what do you do? Well, I usually zoom into the coffee shop, and I buy a cup of coffee, and I buy biscotti, and then I zoom off to work. He said, really, coffee and biscotti? How much is that costing you on a daily basis? Well, in today's world, if you swung by and got a coffee and a biscotti, you'd probably be at 6 or $7 a day, right? So for my purposes here, I said, let's just say that a daily cup of coffee is $5. Now, I'm a tea drinker, not a cup of coffee. So my tea, if I go into a normal coffee shop, whatever it is, and I get my tea with the cream, I have steamed cream, and then I have a flavor shot of sugar-free almond, I have the best drink. It's called a cambric. So it's English breakfast tea or Earl Grey tea, depending on which kind you like, and then the steamed milk or steamed cream, and then the sugar-free almond. It tastes like a liquid poppy seed muffin. It is awesome. I love it. But I was spending five and a quarter a day, and this was like five years ago I was spending five and a quarter a day. Five and a quarter a day, a day to get my tea. Well, guess what I did? I stopped spending five and a quarter a day and I started saving $25 a month. Now, do I still have my tea every freaking morning that I want it? I bought a steamer at home. Actually, my ex-husband bought me a steamer one Christmas because he knew how much I loved my tea. So we have a fancy coffee maker, and I don't make coffee, uh, but my kids like coffee. So we have a fancy coffee maker in the kitchen with a steamer. So every morning, I do a two bags of Earl Grey tea in the microwave, and I boil the water for the tea. Then I do about eight ounces of milk that I steam or my cream that I steam. And then I have the sugar-free almonds. So for less than a dollar a day, I can make my drink for less than a dollar a day. And I used to be four or five years ago spending five and a quarter a day on this. So I implemented the latte factor about four or five years ago, which was good timing because that's about when my ex-husband stopped working. So at five and a quarter a day or just five dollars a day, five times a week, you can save $25 a week, a week, which would equate out to $100 a month. You can then spend that $100 or invest that $100 in a business entity where you can then start earning much more money. So your daily cup of coffee is one area. Here's another area where you can save a lot. And not only can you save a lot of money, but oh my gosh, the health considerations are unbearable. Let's talk about your daily lunches out. So I have some friends at work that go out to lunch every single day. Now I don't know about you, but one of my favorite places to go out to lunch is Chipotle. If I go out to lunch at Chipotle, I get a $7 burrito or so, and then I get a bag of chips with some guac, and then I get a large iced tea, and by the time I'm walking out of the out the door, it's $10 or more. $10 or more for lunch every single day. That's $70 a week that I would be spending if I went out to lunch every day. Well, we all have to eat lunch, right? Or typically we do eat lunch. So I can't save the entire $10 a, a day if I eat in. But let's just talk about eating in. If you eat in and you get a frozen dinner, a reasonable frozen dinner, you can get a lot of frozen dinners for two and a quarter, three dollars, somewhere in that price range. So I just estimated that you could take your daily lunch bill down from ten dollars a day down to three dollars a day, which is a seven dollar a day, five days a week, seven dollars a day, five days a week savings. At seven dollars a day, you can save a hundred and forty dollars a month. 
So that is the savings, that is the purely financial savings. Now let's talk about the health considerations. If you make your own lunch and you control what goes into your own lunch. So my typical lunch is bagged salad, so I buy a huge bag of salad and I leave it at the office and then I either grill a chicken breast or I have whatever meat we had the night before and then I have a bottle of salad dressing at work. That's what I eat for lunch most days. I love it. It's healthy, it's filling, it tastes fabulous. I spend less than three dollars a day typically on lunch. But even if you bought in the frozen food section the three dollar meal, the the even Atkins has some meals there for three or four dollars. Even if you bought that, you'd be saving the money. But if you bring your own lunch and you have salads and you have meats and you can have low carb or you can have low sugar or you can follow whatever diet you want to follow, you'll be saving phenomenal amounts of money by just bringing in your lunch on a daily basis. And if you take it once a week to work, it really isn't a pain in the morning to get going and get out the door. This one is my favorite one. There was a Facebook thing this last week or whatever where you could buy a small bottle, like a 16 ounce bottle of soda for a dollar fifty a day or you could buy a two liter bottle for 99 cents at the grocery store. <laughs> Why? The smaller the bottle, the more expensive does it get. So let's just talk about one of the things that I die with is my daily soda habit. I love my daily soda habit, my Diet Coke. If I buy that soda at the office from one of those machines, it costs $1.50 a day. I can buy a 2 liter bottle for 99 cents and that will last me almost the entire week. Or I could drink water, which is more healthy. But if I just eliminated the daily soda habit at a dollar fifty a day, I'd be saving thirty dollars a month. Eliminate your daily dollar fifty soda habit, and you eliminate thirty dollars a month, and you're not drinking crap that you don't need to be drinking anymore. Right? Soda is one of the worst things that you can drink and put into your body, even the diet stuff, which is what I drink. So my challenge in January is to eliminate soda from my diet, not just have it once a day, but while I'm having it once a day, I can stop drinking it at the office and save $30 a month. Three simple, small, very small, simple things to do, that's $270 a month in savings. And these are things that I see people doing on a daily basis that work right next to me, right? The people that I work with do this, these things on a daily basis. If you eliminate these things, you've just saved $270 a month. And that's just for you. Imagine if you had a family of four or three or whatever, what could you do if you leverage this across the entire family? So that's kind of what we're talking about there, is leveraging that across the entire family. So from my personal experience, right, when we went from a two-income family down to a one-income family, what kind of things did we do? Well, we did the latte factor type things that we just talked about on the previous page. And then we took a real hard look at our monthly expenses, or I did, and I said, really, let's talk about what we can eliminate. Well, cable was one area that we could eliminate. You get this tri, triplex or try something deal with the cable company and it was $129 a month. They advertise it at $99 a month but by the time you added all the extra fees and blah 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 I was paying $129 a month. Well the kids loved cable at the time four or five years ago what were they? They were like 13 and 10 ish in that kind of range and the kids were watching a lot of TV. They were watching South Park, things like that that I don't really like. They were watching Dexter's Laboratory. They were watching Shark Week, which I don't mind Shark Week. Um, things like that. They were watching tons of television. And I wasn't watching any television. And so we really sat down and we... I looked at them and I said, you know, guys, we have to get rid of the television. Now my kids were like 10 and, and 13 at the time. 
I didn't want to get the the tri package has cable, it has internet, and it has home phone. I didn't want to get rid of the home phone because my children didn't have cell phones at the time, and they were old enough with a 13 or 14 year old. I did leave them alone sometimes, like after school and that kind of thing. So I wanted a home phone. So I wasn't willing to let go of the home phone. I certainly wasn't willing to let go of the internet because sometimes I worked at home or to do homework they needed that, or just my my business, my life is revolving around the internet. So the only thing I could let go there is the cable. That saved me thirty dollars a month, and actually closer to forty. But for these purposes, I'm using thirty dollars a month. I took it down from one hundred and twenty nine dollars down to ninety nine dollars a month, and now I get home phone and I get the internet. Now to me, that's still expensive, so I'm working on ways to cut that down. But that was thirty dollars a month, and you know what? I asked them the other day. So this was like four four years ago we did this. I asked them the other day if they even miss TV. They don't miss it at all. With the internet today, we we have Netflix, so Netflix is eight dollars a month for streaming. With Netflix and with what's available on the internet today, they watch everything they care about. Their friends come over and watch programs on our TV on our Netflix account, that kind of thing. So they're not missing out on anything that they care about. So I save thirty dollars a month. I still have the neighborhood kids coming over to our house to watch things. The kids are happy, I'm happy, and we don't feel like we're missing out on anything. Did we feel like we were missing out on things for the first month or maybe six months? Yes. But I was very surprised when I asked them the other day that they still don't feel like they're missing out on something. And when I say I asked them the other day, the other day I went on Financially Fit Fridays. Charlene, who does Financially Fit Females, has a Friday radio program. And so I went on her radio program a couple weeks ago, and I... I asked my children before I went on there if they missed that because we were talking about financial fitness and what you did. So that's why I asked them and I was very thrilled to hear that they didn't miss the cable. So get rid of expensive things like cable. Now we could probably watch TV, normal network TV. We don't even do that. I didn't even try and do that because anything that they want to watch, it's available on Netflix or it's available online, that kind of thing. Here's another significant factor for me, for our family, and I think it could be for your families as well, is no cell phones. My kids didn't have cell phones until they became active in, in their school life and weren't around. So my 17-year-old son, when he turned 16, I bought him a cell phone, a $35 Walmart cell phone, and then I pay... I added him to my um, cell phone account and I pay like $12 a month with all the taxes and everything. So I think it's $9.99 a month to add him, then all the taxes and other kind of crap. It costs me $12 a month to give him a cell phone so that he can call me whenever he needs to call me. It's one of those old fashioned flip phones. It is not a smartphone and I pay that bill so that I know where he is at any time. I do not pay the $30 a month smartphone bill for my kids. My new son, he wants a smartphone. And so I got a, a free used smartphone for him from my sister. She she had upgraded to a newer iPhone. So he has an iPhone 4 that we don't have a contract on, right? So he has an old iPhone 4 and he wanted the smartphone. I said, fine, but I will only pay the $12 a month fee for you. You have to pay the internet and the text on all that other kind of stuff. So my kids, if they want the smartphone stuff, they have to pay that. I'll pay the $12 a month so that I know where you are, but they have to pay that $30 a month smartphone because I don't find that it's a necessity for a 16 or a 17 year old child to be able to surf the internet. They should be in school, they should be listening to the teacher, they should be doing what they're supposed to be doing. So cell phone bills are not huge in my family. They're bigger than I'd like them to be, and I, of course, have data, but my kids, they don't have data unless they pay for data. Now, for my 14-year-old son, who's newly 14, I did finally buy him a cell phone in the last month. They have these new cell phones, the iPhone 5Cs, which was $99 a month, and, and if I add two more smartphones to my plan, two more smartphones, so I have two smartphones for me and my new son. Then I added my oldest son, my natural oldest son. He has the $13 cell phone without the, without the fees, right? 
without the smartphone fees. But if I add a smartphone for him and I just added a smartphone for my youngest son, it only cost me an additional $15 a month to get smartphones all the way around versus the $12 phones, the flip phones. So the $15 a month, I thought that that was a good deal and then the boys will all have to split that. Well, my youngest son, because he doesn't have a job yet, he's 14 and he doesn't have a job, he does shovel snow and, and that kind of thing for friends and, friends and neighbors, but I talked to him that the way that he's going to pay for his smartphone is he's going to have to start blogging beginning with Christmas. He's going to have to start blogging so that he can help the family earn the money to pay for that smartphone. So always be thinking if, if you feel the need to get your children a phone or something like that, how are they going to help with the overall financial health of the family? Here's another way that we saved significantly, $200 or more, I actually think it was more, um, but we save at least $200 by going out to dinner once a month. We all love, my entire family, we love to go out to dinner. That used to be a form of entertainment and I didn't cook at home very often because I was always tired and the pain in the butt and you know I didn't like to cook, but dinner out was killing us. I mean, my food bill was $1,000 a month, and dinner out was another huge bill. Well, we decided that we would go out to dinner once a month. And again, it's this David Box Smart Women Finish Rich. They talk about a budget. I've always had a budget. I'm kind of a budget person. But I started sharing that with the children. Okay, this is how much we have to go out to dinner. We have this much money to go out to dinner, when do you want to go out to dinner and where do you want to go? So now when they come and ask me, they say, Mom, can we go out to Chipotle for dinner tonight? I said, sure, if that's the one dinner you want out a month. You know what? They don't want to spend their dinner out at a place that they can get a $7 burrito or whatever or McDonald's or anything like that. They want to go to a fancier restaurant like Red Lobster or something like that and I'm not really spending that much more for dinner for four at a fancier place than I am walking into one of those fast foodish type places which I love, I totally love, I totally get them but they're very expensive. So the children got involved in doing the budget with me. Here's how much we have budgeted to go out to dinner. If you ask me to go out to dinner I'm gonna say yes as long as it's within our budget. So that is kind of helping the children to develop this budgeting mindset as well. I don't think they really know what's going on, but they they hear me talk about it. We don't call it budgeting and, and that kind of thing really, but we talk about what kind of money we have available for our monthly expenses. So that is very important if you ask me, is to bring that into your children's lives and to be able to do that kind of thing, is to teach them how to do that. And I'm sorry if I've uh, messed up the the slides give me a second and I'll get back on track. Okay, so we just talked about dinner dinner's out slide 6. Now we're going to go to slide 7. Where to save? We talked about the food bill being my the highest bill after my mortgage. I'd refinanced just before my ex-husband and I got a divorce. So my my mortgage bill had was as low as I could have it for my interest. Now we cook at home. You heard me talk about that a minute ago. So even if we go out to McDonald's, and I say McDonald's because my oldest son works at McDonald's, so we still eat a lot of McDonald's, or the kids do, which isn't very healthy, but it's a kid thing. If I took my family of four out to McDonald's, it's 6 to $7 a person by the time you get whatever they want. It costs me $28 for four people to go out to McDonald's. It only costs me about $50 a month, or $50 to go out to a fancy smancy restaurant. So we stopped going out to places like McDonald's. I also have a friend, Regina Smith, who does cooking classes or crock pot, freezer meals, those kind of things. And I haven't been able to go to one of these yet. But we had this interaction last night or the day before on Facebook. And she said, for this crock pot cooking, for about a month's worth of meals, it cost her $114 for organic natural food. $114. She said that was for a family of four. Now I'm going to put the challenge on that woman to see if that's a family of four of teenagers, but even if that was the food for just me and I had to multiply that by four, that would save me tremendously on my food bill. So 
really think about things like crock pot cooking, which my kids hate, but you know what? Having the time in the morning, I take a few minutes in the morning to throw something in the crock pot. If it's tasty, if it's good, if it's low carb, if it's healthy, they will eat it because it's there at the end of the day. And it's better than going out to McDonald's or it's better than the frozen pizzas. It's healthier, it tastes better, and it's done when I get home. When I get home, I'm tired and I don't even have a commute. I'm tired when I get home. So I am so much better throwing something in the crock pot in the morning or planning my meals in the morning and having something simple that the kids can cook. I've saved tons of money and we've started eating better by doing crock pot cooking or doing pre thought cooking, knowing what you're going to have and having it out and having it ready. So the other night my children did fish. I was up in the bedroom and I was taking a meeting. My children cooked fish in the oven. Right? So if you know what you're going to have and you have those meals on hand and you have gone to the grocery store once a week, if you plan your cooking, you can really save a lot of money on your grocery bills. We also talked about bringing your lunch. Very key is to bring your lunch to work. Drink water. You know, that $1.50 a day, I can replace that with bottled soda that I take, so a two liter for a dollar a week instead of $1.50 a day. Or I can just drink water because water is much more healthy for us anyway. So I bring my tea in the morning and then I bring my glass of water or my bottle of water and I put lemon or sometimes I put oranges or I've even heard about cucumbers and cantaloupe. So I'm working on infused water now. Drink water during the day. Save tons of money. We don't drink a lot of sodas. We don't drink a lot of orange juices. We still have I'll, I'll buy a gallon of orange juice a week and I'll buy two gallons of milk a week for the kids. Outside of that, they need to be drinking water. They drink water. I drink water or I drink tea. So that's made us a little bit more healthy of a family is by drinking water and it doesn't cost us any money. And we have, or really any money, and then we have the filter on the fridge. We get the water out of the fridge and it's filtered water. So it really is much more healthy. Another way to save is to bring your own snacks. I eat a lot of nuts at work, um, so I bring snack food like Gorp, or I always have a can of soup in my desk drawer. So I'm not running down to the machine to buy a dollar twenty-five little tiny bag of chips that doesn't even fill you up. I either have a can of soup, or I have some nuts, or I always have some food with me or even a, like a protein bar or something like that. I always have something with me and I try to always have it available for the kids as well. Always have something available for you to eat so that you're not tempted by those expensive and awful vending machines. So those are just some good ideas about where to save and clearly because food is the highest bill in my family outside of the mortgage, I spend a lot of time thinking and talking about food. Here's another place to save entertainment because we all like to be entertained, right? So we already talked a little bit about cable versus Netflix, Netflix or, or Hulu or any of those things is like $8 a month for streaming. Very economical and a lot of people can watch it at the same time. So we have two or three TVs going or computers going at the same time. So entertainment is fairly inexpensive mystery shopping. I also do mystery shopping so if you're interested in that please let me know and I'll tell you where to go and you know because a lot of people try and charge you to sign up for mystery shopping don't do that you know if you want to learn how to mystery shop just reach out to me I'll tell you some of the reputable companies I've dealt with I'm sure there's a lot more reputable companies than I've dealt with but I have never paid a dime to sign up to be a mystery shopper and I can tell you the best places to mystery shop that I've done and so for mystery shopping, I, I really love it because there was a period of time where I was mystery shopping haircuts every month, right? So I had two teenage boys at the time and then myself. I didn't pay for a haircut and in fact going out to a haircut, I did pay, you know, but then they reimbursed me. Going out to haircut, I would go out to haircut and you have to write up a little report, right? It takes you an hour or less to write up a report. I'd go out for the haircut. Then my mileage becomes tax deductible, right? Because it's part of the business. The amount that I pay out for the haircut. So you have to pay it out the door first and then it gets reimbursed to you. And I earned $5 for each haircut. 5 or $10, maybe it's 7 something in there. So I would get like 
two haircuts a month and then once a quarter I would get myself a haircut, I wasn't paying for a haircut. Now were these at big hoity-toity salons? No, these were at the more economical places where you could get a haircut, but I wasn't paying for a haircut. It was fabulous. So you can have haircuts. You can go out to dinner. You can go out to dueling piano bars. You can do a lot of fabulous fun things. Art museums or amusement parks. For a while I was only doing amusement parks with the kids and the haircuts. I don't like the mystery shopping where, personally anyway, where you go to the store, you buy something and then you have to return it. I mean you get like two dollars or something for that. And I'm not a shopper by nature so that's not fun for me. I didn't like to do that. So you can decide what you like to do and you can mystery shop it. So out here in the Denver area we have this summer place called Water World and it's slides and it's a wave pool and it's like too cool. You go out to this water world type place, they pay for basically your family, not everybody in the family, but most of the family. We like to go out to water world once a year. Well, all I had to do was spend like two hours after we got done with an eight hour day out at the water park and they bought our food and it wound up being free, right? Or a very small dollar amount because I took the ex-husband with me, you know, those kind of things. They have these parks where it's an indoor amusement park. You can play putt-putt golf. You can do this, that, and the other. So there are amusement parks where you can get paid. And those, those reports are a little bit bigger than some of these other reports where you go out to dinner. Or going out to dinner, I can go out to some of these places where you eat, like Smash Burgers or Wahoos or where else have I gone? Um, wings. There's a lot of places where you can go out for the kind of dinners that I go out for. I don't sign up for things that I don't do. I pay in advance and they return the money to me. So essentially I get it for free or close to free because I like to go out with someone else, right? So if they pay for me and I pay for someone else, I just got a two for one deal, right? The big deal is that you have to have good record keeping and you have to make sure that they pay you. And I've never had a company that didn't pay me, but I've had a problem where I haven't cashed the checks timely. So make sure that you're organized and that you're ready to do that. Mystery shopping is fabulous. Again, please do not pay a fee for that because I can show you how to do that for free if that's what interests you. What else in terms of entertainment? There are free days in every major city all over the nation. The other day there was a free day at the Art Museum, the History Museum, and the Botanic Gardens. My youngest son and I, we had a day of it. We went to the Molly Brown House here in Denver. It was just before um, just before Halloween. We went to the Molly Brown House. We toured that. I wanted to go there forever. It was a free day. It wasn't incredibly busy because we got there right at the time it opened. It was in the evening. So we saved like $20 because it was $10 a person. We went to the Botanic Gardens. It was a free day at the Botanic Gardens as well. That's another $20 a person we saved. So we saved $40 that day. Every month there seems to be something free in Denver, like today is free day at the art museum. I might take the kids off to the art museum today. It's zero degrees or something ungodly cold out there. So today would be a good day to go to some of those free type things because it's free day at the art museum today. So look for those free days at the places you want to go. Now go early because on free days oh my goodness the crowds are awful right so you have to arrange your days and your times so that you're going early or you're going on the non-peak times to make it more enjoyable for you but you can do a lot of cultural things on those free days and really enjoy yourself in some of these larger cities there are also free events all over the city there's like free tree lighting it's almost Christmas right so there's free tree lighting there's the parade of lights going on downtown in Denver tonight I am not going because it's too cold for me we've done that at multiple communities around the Denver area this last week there are also free tours all over the city so we're right by the Coors Brewing Company a Muslim Coors you can have free tours at Coors we're by Celestial Seasonings up in Boulder. There are free tours at Celestial Seasonings. If you ever get to Boulder, you have to take that tour. You go into the mint room. It is amazing. There's Hammond's Candy Factory. You can get free tours there. There's a glass blowing place that was doing free tours in Denver. There are free tours all over the city. The Denver Mint has free tours. The state capitol has free tours. 
just start researching the free tours and build days around free tours. You can have a fabulous time with your family with these free tour days or the free days at the art museums and things like that. And if you don't, aren't doing those kind of things, parks are almost always free. Go play frisbee in the park. Change the way that you live your life and live your life around people instead of around expensive events, right? Think about people instead of events. So socialize more at home. We really enjoy, like on Thanksgiving, we played a new game. It was called Cash Flow. It's based on Robert Kiyosaki's um, book, Rich Dad, Poor Dad, and some of the skills he's learned. Well, for years, we used to have family game night, and now we've gotten away from it as the children have gotten older and they play football on Friday night or they do this or they do that or the other, you know, that kind of thing. So we'd gotten away from family game night. Well, we did it again on Thanksgiving. The, the four of us did family game night. We did cash flow, which is a very expensive game, but let me tell you, it was worth it. It's kind of like Monopoly, only with a little twist. You're these rats running around in circles in the rat race, and you have to build passive income streams so you can jump out of the rat race and go and buy your dream. It's fabulous. It really is fabulous. So the kids and I played that, and then I ran away to finish dinner. So we played it while the turkey was cooking. I ran away to finish dinner, and one of their friends came over on Thanksgiving and took my place. They played it again. So, you know, have a family game night or f have a friend's game night. I learned to play cash flow. I went to one of these meetings where they played cash flow on a Friday night, a meetup. If you've heard of meetup, that's where you can go and socialize and grow your business and things like that, usually for free, often for free. But you can go to different places on meetups. So figure out how to socialize at home or at small areas where it doesn't cost you money. Do a home movie night. The other night we had a Dexter, if you've ever seen the movie Dexter, the, the series Dexter, it's hysterical. He's a serial killer that works for the police department. It's hysterical. The kids were all over. There were five boys in my living room watching Dexter. Have family movie nights or, or friend movie nights. Get back to socializing at home. You can have a crock pot dinner or a, or a potluck dinner with your friends and family, or you can just buy popcorn and soda you'll save so much more and you'll enjoy it so much more because you can talk and you're all together. Start socializing at home. If there's something I really, really, really want to do, and be careful here, but if there's something I really want to do or if there's something I really want to buy, like I love those lotions, those body butter lotions, I do watch Groupons and I use Groupons, but be careful. Make sure it's something you really, really, really want to use because so many people buy them and never use them, but you can use those Groupon certificates for things that you really want to do, or restaurants.com, or whatever. I can go out for a $35 meal for $13 when I do restaurants.com. I'm very limited to which restaurants I can go to, there are like 8,000 restaurants or 5,000 restaurants nationwide that you can go to. So watch for these coupon type programs for the things that you really, really, really want to do and pay some money because it's very economical. You can get quite a deal there. So I've taught you a little bit, given you a few tips on how to save money in a lot of different areas. Sorry, it, that's my 15 minute warning that it's time to almost be done. Last time I did this I went a little bit over and I need to be more cognizant of the time that you're spending because I promised you an hour or less every Saturday and I went over the last time. So I have my timer set so that I don't go over that hour again. So how much to invest in your business? How should you invest it? Well here's my question to you. What do you want to earn? Often I get the six-figure answer. I want to earn $100,000 a year. I want my business to earn $100,000 a year. So that's what I've just put up here. Okay. So $100,000 a year is earning $8,333 a month. So if you want to earn $100,000 a year, let's break it down into a monthly. $8,333 a month. Well, here's a question for you. How much would you invest? to earn a hundred thousand dollars a year. Well, honestly, what I've heard is that you should be investing twenty percent of your 
earnings to grow your business to the level that you want it to grow into. So if you want to earn $100,000 a year, that's $20,000 a year in investing in your business. That's a little bit big to jump on the boat investing $20,000 a year in my business. That's that's ooh kind of makes me pucker up a little bit, right? That's a lot. But what if we invested 1% of $100,000 to earn $100,000. Now, 1% investment might not get us there, but it'll start getting us there. So if we invest just 1% of what we want to earn, just 1% of $100,000, 1% of $100,000 of is about $20 a week. Well, we just went over on the latte factor that if you made your own coffee and took it with you, you could probably save $25 a week. So $20 a week to invest 1% of your potential earnings in yourself, in your business, $20 a week. We just showed you how to save $25 and more. I mean, what did I save you? $300 a month? So you've saved a lot more than $25 a week. So if you invest in yourself at just $20 a week, start investing just the $20 a week and then as your business earns more money as you earn whatever let's say this month you earn $100 in your business well then invest that additional $20 whatever your business earns then invest 20% of your earnings I just showed you how to skim down your personal budget so your personal budget could help you save the one percent that you can invest in your business now as your business earns the money then invest the twenty percent of the earnings in your business that's what's going to get you to that six-figure income is by continually investing in yourself so when you earn that hundred dollars that first hundred dollars you don't spend that hundred dollars you invest twenty of those dollars back into your business and every hundred dollars you earn you invest twenty dollars of that earnings back into your business okay in addition to this one percent that you're that you're setting aside from your budget when you do that that's how you can grow a business in a manner that most of us can appreciate in a manner that most of us can achieve right so I'm not going to ask you to invest twenty thousand dollars a year in your business not today over time you will Let's figure out how to invest a small amount in your business to get it jump started and then as you make more earnings you invest larger portions in your business. So you have this $20 a week, what do you invest in? So $20 a week, if you're going to invest $20 a week, that's 20, 40, 60, $80 a month, right? You have $80 a month maybe you should invest in. Here's what I suggest, here's what I do, okay? So when I suggest, I do more than suggest, I do. Okay, so what did I invest in? As a speaker, author, coach, I knew, and you, if you heard me on my last Saturday Sanctuary, you know that I knew I had to blog. So I invest $25 a month in my blogging platform, $25 a month. I also wholly and completely understand that you have to have a daily learning plan so you can do that by investing in reading every day you can do that investing in audios every day this inner circle thing is one of the empower networks daily audio programs I've invested in the inner circle which is a hundred dollars a month and the reason I've done that is because I want to continue to grow my business I want to do something different every day so for $125 a month on the Empower Network, I can start building my Empower Network. I also do coaching, right? I give coaching, I take coaching. So coaching, you can get po coaching programs for as low as $200 a month. I have a three-month coaching program that's $200 a month. I have a six-month coaching program that is even less than $200 a month. But think about a coaching program remember that one page that I showed you we saved over two hundred and seventy dollars a month by small little things like taking your lunch not having coffee and stop drinking soda those three things saved me two hundred and seventy dollars a month for me just personally so I invest two hundred and seventy dollars a month in my business so that I can grow it why would you do that? Why would you invest that kind of money? Why wouldn't you just save it and pay down your charge cards or whatever? 
because paying down my charge cards, while very important and something I really want to do, I know that if I invest my money, I will be doing better in the long run. So what are the results of people like me who have been able to do this, save the money and invest in themselves? Now with the Empower Network, one of the things that they make sure that we say is that these results are not typical. With the Empower Network or with Mary Kay or with whatever you're doing, these results aren't typical because most people don't do what they're supposed to do. Most people lose steam and they don't keep going, which is one of the reasons I highly recommend things like the inner circle or some kind of daily motivation that you need that daily motivation or you're not going to stay on track. So this is for people who stay on track, who actually work the system. They plan the work and they work the plan. Okay, That's not typical. You have 1-3% to of the population who will do that, who become successful in their business. You, here on a Saturday morning, are one of those people. So I know you're going to do this, just like I'm doing this, right? So you have to follow the rules. You have to work your plan. Matt, these are Empower Network people because we share our earnings with a lot of people. Matt just made 1.5K the other day. So he put it out there on Facebook that he just made 1.5K in a very short period of time. George, who is my sponsor, he is now making 9K a month. So he's hit that 100,000 a year threshold and he makes 9K a month now. Um, he's been in Empower, I want to say, four or five months. So he has built, and he had a six-figure coaching business that he shut down to move to the Empower Network. Now, I'm not advocating that. Everybody has to do what's right for them. Whatever business you're in, though, what I'm showing you is these people work the business. Whatever it is, these people work the business. Their business happens to be the Empower Network, and they work it, and they work it well. Avram and Nikki the sponsors of George. So we're under Team Have It All and Avram and Nikki are our leaders. They, last October, and I just started with Empower in October, okay. So last October, so just two months ago, they spoke on stage at the Empower Network event and they had started earning $40,000 a month. $40,000 a month. They've been with Empower for a year-ish, year and a half-ish, somewhere in that neighborhood. So what I'm showing you are the possibilities of investing in yourself. I'm not just telling you to save that money that we've just figured out how to save. I'm telling you to invest in yourself. This is the path I'm on. I'd like you to come with me because I believe in prosperity. I believe that there's enough for everyone and this is the path that I'm on. So once I get to this, I'm going to have a lot of money to pay off my debts, right? I won't have credit card debt anymore when I hit this level. So I'm going to replace my income and then I'm going to do better. So these were just a few little tips because I can't really share a whole lot with you in, in an hour. These were just a few little ways to save. Would you like to learn more about different ways to save money? I have a white paper, a free white paper on 25 ways to save $25 or more per month. 25 ways to save $25 or more per month. And what I ask you to do is join me on my Saturday Sanctuary mailing list. And here's my Aweber address that you can link there or just go to my Facebook page and I'll put it out there on my Facebook page as well. So. Sign up for Saturday Sanctuary and I will give you a free white paper on 25 ways to save $25 or more a month. And invest that in yourself. Invest those savings in yourself so that you can grow and your business can grow. I'd be happy to help you grow because I am a coach and I do totally buy the Power Network blog thing. I think that that is the way to grow and that's what I'm doing personally but it might not be for everyone and it might not be for you and that's okay because in the end what we need to do is help each other get to where we need to do, go and how we need to grow. So if you found this interesting, if you found this insightful, helpful and you'd like to connect with me, please 
linked up with me on my Facebook page, Leslie Lane Peabody. I love to interact with people on Facebook. I share some business coaching things, and then I share stupid little things, which are fun. So the other day, we we started this little quote thing, Chris, quotes from your favorite Christmas movie. This is the 20%. If you've watched my um, blogging platform last week, the last Saturday Sanctuary, we talked about blogging and how 20% should be fun, and then 80% should be business. Well, the 20% fun gets... 80% of the interaction, frankly. And so we we are doing this little thing on my Facebook page about your favorite Christmas quotes. And people will put quotes out there, and I'm having to try and figure out where the quotes come from. It's a great game. And I have probably 65 maybe um, comments on that one post, 65 comments or something. It's just fun, right? So it's fun. So connect with me. We'll have fun together. I also have my webpage out there, leslielanepeabody.com. Please join me on my webpage. You'll learn about my coaching programs. You'll learn, you'll learn about my book, Lead Like a Mother, M-U-T-H-E-R, or is it Mother, M-O-T-H-E-R. So you'll learn about my new book. You'll learn about my coaching program. You'll learn more about me. My blog link is out there for the Empower Network. Or if you wanted to go straight to my blog, it's Ninja Mobile Money, www.ninja, N-I-N-J-A, hyphen mobile hyphen money dot com ninja mobile money I named it ninja mobile money because while my coaching business is geared towards women um, my empower network business is not I think everyone not just women but everyone needs to build a passive income stream and so ninja mobile money is the business that helps you build passive income using the empower network in your blogging as your blogging platform so thank you for joining me on this Saturday Sanctuary and I hope to learn more about you as we get to know each other and I leave you with these words as you go along in life you need to make sure that you dream massively you live passionately and you grow your business passively thank you so much for joining me today and I look forward to meeting you on the next Saturday Sanctuary bye for now